Okay. Where to begin? Alright, so... I think it's time to address the whole Joker thing. And I'm going to do this to the Budapest community and to the Australian community, I guess, and other people around the world who know who I am and are aware of my past, are aware of my past identities and are aware of the impact that a movie, a piece of art like the original Joker has on me personally and possibly other people out there can't speak for them, can only speak for myself. So I'm going to do this in the form of a review slash kind of like a call to action or a slash commentary on the reception of the sequel, Joker, Folie Du. I've seen and heard most of the media commentators, aka middle-aged fucking children who scream and shout about their franchises from the 80s being destroyed by uh, Disney and stuff like that. All of those YouTubers, Critical Drinker, fucking um, Angry Joe, <coughs> haven't heard from Red Media yet, but even Mark Bernard and, and Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith, really his opinion is kind of like fucking <coughs> moot anyway. Um, and the people in my community, my own community, are all been saying one of two things. One, that the movie ultimately fails and disappoints. And the other half of people's reactions when I ask people in my community whether, what they think of the movie is, oh, I heard it's really bad. So, they haven't seen it yet. But... They've seen these, the, this, this mass media fucking reaction and they've just basically not bothered to go see it because I don't think, A, they can fucking handle what it's trying to say and what it does say, and I'll get to that. But it's just another case of misinformation causing an entire community of people, a society of people, to A, avoid and B, not confront the issues that the film highlights about mental illness about identity about celebrity about uh, golden calves and fucking um, martyrs okay Lady Gaga was in it fantastic she was awesome in it fine she was people say underused but this was never going to be a Lady Gaga film Perhaps it was kind of... I didn't think it was marketed like that either. I think it was still Arthur Fleck-centric. So it was your baggage, those people complaining about the fact that Lady Gaga was under underutilised. Your baggage that you brought to the table that fucked up your experience. Sorry. This isn't fucking A Star Is Born 2. This is Joker 2. It was always going to be about Arthur Fleck. And as for the people who complain that he, um, that Todd Phillips assassinated the character because the whole world reacted to Joker in a way that he wasn't happy with, I think that's bullshit. I think the way Joker was crafted from the ground up was about getting us on board with the character and being in his shoes and feeling empathy and actually seeing a hero rise. A tainted hero, but a still a hero nonetheless. He was completely represented as a hero of that film. That was the ultimate joke. That was why he says at the end you, can't, you, you wouldn't get it. So ultimately, I think 90% of people who have seen this movie, critics or not, simply didn't get it. The second film is a 
it le- literally is a second half of a full picture. Like, I would suggest when it comes out on streaming, you got to watch them side by side and you'll get a full film. It is a direct continuation and it is the natural direction of what that character had to go through in terms of an arc. We saw the first arc, him becoming a martyr, becoming seen, putting on the makeup, embracing a part of him that is wild. And in the second film, you see him being that character still in the confines of an environment that he doesn't really care about because he has nothing to lose, then finding something to lose. That relationship, it's all about relationships, man, because, like, the poor guy was teased with one in the first film, and who are we to deny him having those romantic experiences with another character, which naturally was going to be Harley Quinn? And seeing how that romance actually galvanised the Joker character in him, but ultimately his redemption came through relinquishing that fantasy, relinquishing that mask, admitting that he's not crazy, he just is kind of a fantasist and he reacted to those things, that he is two people, that, that he's one person. That was the whole argument of the film, is this argument about can you be two people? A mentally ill character has a split personality. It's been dealt with in other films and fucking stupid ways like that fucking annoying M. Night Shyamalan fucking film like Split or whatever like what a lot of shit right so it really is like that and I'm speaking from personal experience and the people in the Budapest community know all about that for those of you who don't I used to wear makeup I used to be called Joker. I called myself Joker. The name Joker, J-O-K-A, came from me being in a mental institution against my will. And that was where my character of Joker was born. Off the back of the, the love that I've had for the previous iterations of the character. So it's personal for me. And also, this review is kind of in a reaction to people coming up to me in my community, putting their hand on my shoulder and giving me the are you okay speech. Oh, you saw the film. What did you think? Are you okay? Did you, are you okay? Are you okay? Like they're talking to a dog that's about to bite. And then I ask him, have you seen the film? How do you think I would react? And their answer is, no, I heard it's not that good. (laughs) Then I kind of say, well, what can I say? But yeah, it's a shame that people aren't seeing this movie. And I think I have have faith that in the long term, it's going to be like one of those Blade Runner type things, like a a cult classic, especially when you see them side by side. Um, The ending, you know, when Mark Bernardin says like, you know, why didn't anyone look at the script when, you know, when he was, when they were funding all this money, everyone talk, talk, they all, all people do talk about budgets these days. So what? Okay, the budgets are big for fucking Disney movies. The budget was big for this one. The world's a fucking more expensive place. I don't know. Who cares? It looked beautiful. It sounded beautiful. It was performed beautifully. And the script was fucking tight. Didn't, nothing felt clunky and shit. The dialogue was fine. So, like, what the fuck? I don't get it. The thing is, people don't get it. It's on them. It's a shame. And yeah, as you can see, I'm still kind of touching my face up here and there with the makeup. But I'm also kind of proving the point that as someone who suffers from bi- as someone who lives with bipolar, if you want to put a name to it, it and people who have the same condition and a lot of the people who suffer from the condition can attest to it really is like being two different people. My brother has it, my friends have it, 
some of them, and the varying degrees of the intensity between the separation of these two people inside you is um, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. <coughs> 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 Joker laughs, I cough when I start getting emotional, excited slash passionate, and ultimately when I'm rolling a cigarette, so yeah, go figure. Anyway, back on track. What was I saying? So, the film itself... When I saw it, I felt a complete sense of closure. Ironically, I'm comfortable wearing the makeup now. I was before, but this time I feel like... The character of Arthur Fleck was redeemed. And I always felt that that's what this film should have been about. And it was. Sure, he... Spoilers at the end. But he'd come full circle. And it's tragic, actually. It's sad that he didn't get to have the mountain, as they called it. That she was kind of... Not good for him. It was a bad romance, in a sense. She saw the version of him that was the fire. She fell in love with the, the werewolf. And she didn't want the real man to be around. It speaks volumes about how people choose relationships with other people and then try and coax the, the dangerous side of them out just so they can f feed their own needs. You know? Todd Phillips and the other writer, Silverman, they really do have a commentary on the dangers of in this, and it's a, it's a, it's a sub-theme in, in the whole film, and maybe that's what people are kind of a bit icky about, because it's unfashionable to be kind of pointing the finger at a girl or a woman, a mother or a, or a lover, and saying, hey, these people exist. There are women out there, men too, but there are, in particular, I've met many women who are studying psychology so they can understand the, the brain of a man or, of, or a, another woman or people in general so they can kind of, I don't know, kind of be like kind of dexterous. <laughs> Look, I'm the son of one. My mum worked in a psych ward as a secretary. And she would sit in the room and transcribe all the dialogue that was happening with the doctors and their patients, especially, uh, well, the patients with children because it was a children's mental institution. So my mum did her study. And that is why I relate to this movie a lot. So, that's the movie. As for my life, well, I have a gig this Friday with the band. I'm promoting myself as Joker. On, I've always have on stage, but it's really been Josh who's been behind the wheel in the last couple of years. And I kind of woke up on a flight back from Portugal with my mother after an ayahuasca experience. And I went from being kind of homeless in 2021 to Josh's experience of redeeming me and, well, redeeming himself. And then, I, you know, I wasn't, I was asleep at the wheel, but I was still aware. I was the one kind of beating him up about it and demanding that I come back. But then on a plane ride back from Portugal with mum, 
to get married to Yaz a week later, I woke up on the plane. And then I had to pretend to be Josh for the next few days. But I was also kind of handling things really well. But also kind of also being a bit confrontational as people started to notice, as my wife was noticing. And I did bring it up. I said, do you think I'm kind of acting like him again? In which she would say, yeah. And yeah, I got married on a boat with the love of my life. And the biggest joke is, when she kissed me, <laughs> she was kissing Joker. She was kissing me. She was kissing Joshua, but I felt like Joker. And I have since. People say, nah, I see you as one person. That's who I see you as. And they say it almost in a kind of uh, sympathetic or empathetic way when they don't understand that for me, it makes it more feel and make more sense in my life to consider that I am one person with two states of energy and energy sculptures behavior, thinking, morality, not morality, but like courage and confidence. And these energy states swing with people like me. And a community has to be in love with both of them or be tolerant of both of them or be understanding of both of them for that one person to exist, coexist in that society. And that's tricky for people because you don't know what you're dealing with. Hence why when I wear the makeup, you do know who you're dealing with. People are, Yasmin asked me the other night, what does this mean now? This is a flag. This is a, you're not talking to Joshua as you know him or as you know of him. You're talking to Joker. Fucking Budapest, fucking sirens. God damn it. People say I'm crazy. Have a look out the window. Anyway, I'm going to release this after the gig because if I release it beforehand, no one will show up. They'll think I'll kill myself on stage. That mistake has been made in the past in my life. And if anyone's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Uh, you weren't in Australia in 2016 and in 2019, and you weren't in Budapest in 2019 and in 2021. People still call me Joker. But they're saying it differently this time. And they can call me Joshua. And that's fine too. And I have three months to be alive. I'm not killing myself. But me as this energy will go to sleep in a few months. I'd say Feb. So... I'm on limited time and I might come back. I will come back down the track. Life finds a way. But there's a tax to being like this. And my goal is to kind of do what Arthur Fleck did, which is to kind of just, no, actually the opposite. To not scapegoat it for society by saying that you're one person, but to actually try and craft society to accept two people as one. That I could be Joker and Joshua at the same time. So in that regards, I do disagree with the movie. But still.
that's my review over. Fucking you other cunts can suck it in terms of you critical fucking drinkers and you fucking angry Joes. Especially you critical drinker, you fucking hypocrite. My name is Joshua slash Joker, and see you next week, here till February, <laughs> here till February.